Hey everyone, today we're learning how to do this guy, and although it looks like a nice, easy Photoshop image in the background, it's really not. It's super customizable. You can change the image, you can change the gradient. You can even do this really cool effect in Illustrator that I'll show you guys how to do. So make sure you guys are watching the small details and nuances because there's a lot in order to get this effect correctly working. So we're gonna start off in Illustrator and we're going to try to make this cool effect and I'll show you guys what this can do. So you guys can customize this to whatever you actually need it to be. Uh, and obviously I'm gonna teach you guys how to do this so we can put it into our InDesign file. So the magic really begins by creating our new document. We're gonna go ahead and use our eight and a half by 11. So turn inches, eight and a half by 11 to our board's orientation portrait. Go ahead and just hit create. This is our new board. First thing I'm gonna do is go down to the bottom left. Artboard tool, we're gonna to drag the second artboard right onto our first and boom, there's our two magazine spread. So we're gonna start off by creating a text. So type tool with the T. So for me, I'm gonna be creating this like vibe, this July summer vibe kind of magazine layout. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in July. That's one of the best summer months in my opinion. Go ahead and select everything, change this to a font that has something that is really bold. So for example, I'm gonna show you guys Futura. You see how it says extra bold? That's kind of what we want because we're putting an image in here. What we are going to do is go up to type and then create outline. So now this thing is infinitely stretchable and scalable and that's exactly what we need. Let's make it pretty darn big. Another thing, if you guys don't have a text that is super thick, you can also adjust these and just make it thicker. So uh, that's a little bit of a trick that you can employ to actually make this work as well. Okay, great. So now that we have this, all we're going to do is copy this. So I'm holding Alt and I am making a copy and then I'm going to just make that one a little bit smaller. And that gets to the next tool, which is the blend tool. What we're going to do is select this select the one in the bottom and then go over here to blend and then we're going to click this guy click this guy and you'll know you've done it when another one shows up click the selected blend we're going to go into objects blend blend options so it's going to bring up this little window we're going to change it to specific steps and for this one let's just use something like 15 and you can preview that uh, very easily okay so now it just looks like a mumble jumble mess. And what we're going to do is double click into this. And you can see that there's a top July, there's a bottom July. And for the bottom July, we're just gonna change that to white, okay? So now you can see the blend is becoming more legit a little bit, but there's a problem where the bottom July is actually on top of the top July. So what we're going to do is click the top July, right click, arrange, bring to front, boom. There we go, that's exactly what we want. Okay, so the next step for us is going to be the gradient tool. Now, all we're going to do is change the top color into a gradient that we like, so it's not just black or white or a single color turning into white. So go ahead and go into the gradient tool and you can select each one of these guys just by clicking on them. And then you can adjust, sorry, didn't click on those guys well enough. And then you can just kind of drag it in and out like this in order to create your gradient. So that looks pretty good. I do want to change the colors on this gradient. So I'm going to go and switch on the gradients tab, which is under window and gradients. Now you can see that there's two colors here and we want to choose colors that kind of conform to our image, which is my next point. You actually want to know what color your image is going to take. Uh, because that's what's going to work best when you put a gradient into your text. So here, all I've done is at the bottom, the lighter color, I've sampled somewhere here. And then in the darker color, I've gone ahead and sampled somewhere over here. And you can see that that is now my gradients. And all I have to do is apply it onto this guy and use the gradient swatch to kind of just adjust it, similar to how we did with the other guy. Now, the next step is to make the bottom one into a solid fill. We actually want this to be completely white. So I'm gonna make that into a white one just so it disappears into the back of the page. Maybe I'll drag it up just a tiny bit. You can see how if I drag this, everything else moves as well, which is super cool. Now, the other thing we're gonna add onto this is a nice white stroke like this. 
And I'm gonna turn that on to something like, oh, that's too thick. Maybe something like A1, just so we can see enough of the text. That's all we have to do in Illustrator. So what we're going to do is just select everything here, copy it, so control copy, or you can right click and copy. And then we're gonna go into InDesign. Hey, you guys get your Adobe programs yet? Because if you haven't, I have an affiliate link down in the description where you can get it. And if you're a student, it's like 85% off, which is crazy for all this super powerful tools. So if you wanna support the channel and also get an Adobe subscription, then why not just do that right here? I really appreciate it and let's get back into the video. Okay, so in InDesign, we're creating kind of the same document as Illustrator portrait, eight and a half by 11. We're gonna have two pages and we're gonna start on the second page just because we don't want the first cover spread. And I'm gonna leave everything else as is, make sure we have 0.125 for the bleed. And I'm gonna go ahead and create that document. Okay, great. So remember we have the copied version from Illustrator. So we're gonna go ahead, right click, and just paste that in place. So you can see it's gonna come in nice and gradient-y like we want it to be. Okay, so how do we put an image in here? Now, there is a couple ways to do it, but before we do anything, I suggest we create just one new layer. The next thing we're gonna do is right-click on our group here, ungroup everything, and see that each one of these guys is actually gonna come in as its own thing. And we're going to take the top, four letters, the biggest ones, and we're actually gonna move it to the top layer that we created. Now, what I'm gonna do is lock everything else. So over here, I'm gonna lock all the bottom layers so we can't select it. And with the top layers, I'm gonna select everything, go into object, path, and make this a compound path. Okay, so now that we have the frame, what we're going to do is just drag our image in. Okay, great, so our image is in. I'm gonna do a fitting frame proportionally and you can see if I double click into this that the frame is actually more horizontal but the image itself is more vertical so I'm gonna just drag the image in until where I think makes more sense then what I'm gonna do is just delineate it a tiny bit from the background and I'm gonna do that by going into windows and I'm gonna change on effects so in effects we're going to go into this little FX tab and I'm gonna do a drop shadow. Now, personally, I think the trick for this drop shadow is it wants to be super light. So let's say something like 25%. It wants to follow the same shadow direction as what you have for all the other kind of duplicates. And I actually like to use a color that is complementary or a direct opposite of the pink that we're using. So we're gonna to try to use the cyan. And I think that's gonna work a lot better than if we just use black. It adds a little bit more texture, a little bit more color into the composition, which is great. Okay, and then we're just gonna change the spread a tiny bit. So it's got a tiny bit of spread and change the size up just a tiny bit. Okay, that looks great. Now you can see that there is a little bit of an issue with the white. It's not quite the same as all the other ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and just give this a bit of a paper outline and we're gonna change this to two point font or two points. So I'm gonna unlock this and I'm gonna select everything and I'm just going to group this. So I'm hitting control G or you can right click and hit group. Now you're able to position this anywhere you want. In the interest of making this video not too long, I'm gonna go ahead and populate everything with some text. So that looks pretty nice. I do have some text boxes that are clipping, unfortunately, into our group here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a text wrap on this thing, but I'm not gonna do it for the whole entirety of this, just on the top layer. So in order to do that, I'm gonna separate out all the layers. So I'm gonna create layer three, which is going to be all of my text, my headers, and my page numbers, everything like that. So I'm gonna drag that into layer three and just lock that. Then I'm gonna ungroup my image over here and then just make sure I have the top selected as layer two and then everything else, so if I select this, deselect the top, everything else is in layer one. What we can do is lock layer one, go to layer two, which, is, which just has this, and then we're gonna put a text wrap around it which is window and text wrap, which is right here. And then we're gonna choose this one actually, jump text, which allows it to not cut from 
the top or the bottom or even a weird border around the outside, but just a reasonable border around the, just the text box of the actual text itself. And yeah, that's about it. The thing I like about this one is it's so customizable and you guys can put whatever you want into this. For example, if I wanna put something purple in here, I can. But yeah, the possibilities are really endless with this guy. And that's it. That's all I have for you guys today. If you guys did learn something, please share that down in the comments, leave a like, subscribe, share with your friends. But with that said, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.